All right, welcome back to the channel. I'm Demarius Jackson with Jazz Improv Basics. And uh, today we're going to be talking about sight reading. Uh, just to give you a little background, and this is basically a video on how to improve your sight reading, or just a couple of concepts that maybe you can use or you can use on a student or anything like that to uh, try to help them progress in sight reading. Honestly, I'll start off by saying that the best way to improve your sight reading is to for me at least, is to sight read as much as possible. But there are a couple of strategies that you can use to uh, you know, try to progress in that. Uh, one thing that uh, I had struggles with when I was coming up and learning jazz and music in general is just sight reading, especially jazz. I would play out the Omni book. I'm a saxophone player and I would play marches and I don't know what the deal was or stuff that was in cut time and uh, things that were jazz. It was just like it was way too much for me to consume at one time. And I kind of folded in, uh, you know, I got better over the years through a lot of sight reading, but by implementing a couple of these strategies, uh, I think it helped me out a lot. So the first thing we'll talk about is imagining an imaginary bar line. So all notes aside, I'm not fancy enough to have a, you know, staff paper board up here, but notes aside, we're just going to be talking about rhythm. If you can get rhythms down, I, I promise you notes will come. So let's just pretend that this is a ba ba do ba da. Right, this is a jazz figure by Baduva Dot in 4 4, or you can consider it cut time or whatever you want. But that's essentially the rhythm by Baduva Dot. So, first thing we have to do is imagine, uh, imagine an imaginary bar line that separates the bar in half. Right? And for something like this, if this is 4 4, right, I have this half of the bar and then I have this half of the bar. Now, once we can uh, kind of visualize an imaginary bar line through all our music, uh, it helps us to kind of segment things from, you know, measure to measure. Bam, 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 bam. And uh, I firmly believe it helps us improve our time. Honestly, we can see that and we don't think of everything as kind of one, you know, big block. We can see this half and we can see this half. The same thing with cut time or whatever it may be, even 6-8. All right, so that's our first thing that we need to imagine to be able to be able to do. Uh, the second thing that we want to think about is there's only a couple of rhythms, realistically, that can happen on beat one and beat two. We'll just call this beat one and beat two as if we're in a cut time. And there's only a certain amount of rhythms. Now, obscure and contemporary music aside, that's a whole different gist. Uh, but most people, when you write music, when you read jazz, especially if you read a lot of marches, you can clearly see there's only a certain amount of rhythm. So let's go through some of those rhythms. And you can ask yourself this, and once again, you can ask the student. The most common rhythm that we can have, you know, we can have a half note. We can have a half note here, we can have a half note there. But most likely, we're just concerned with one or either, because they can interchange. All right, what else can you have? We can also have two quarter notes. Sorry, my, uh, my writing isn't all that good. We can also have dotted quarter and an eighth. Uh, we can have two eighths and a quarter. We can have the reverse of that, a quarter and two eighths. And then we can reverse any of these rhythms. So you might not see it too often, but I guess you could also have something to the effect of an eighth and a quarter. And once again, all of these things can be replaced by rest. You can replace any of these uh, with rest. Uh, let's see, what else can we have? We can have uh, this syncopated rhythm down here, eighth, quarter, eighth. And of course you can have sixteenth notes. Uh, I'm not even going to write that up here, but you can get the gist of it for yourself. Sixteenths, you, you, honestly in a march you wouldn't see that. Something like John Philip Sousa, uh, Edwin Franco Goldman, any march that you encounter. Uh, but it does happen from time to time. So let, well, how many is that? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven rhythms that, uh, that we have right here. And of course, uh, there can be a couple of more uh, that you have. Uh, I mean, I guess you could probably have something to the effect of quarter. I hope all this is on the screen. Uh, quarter and a triplet. And then the reverse of that as well. Now, once again, any of these things can be replaced by rest. So the first thing I tell people is be able to recognize these rhythms and recognize that there's not too many of them. If we can perfect these rhythms, then we can really get it down. You want to get to a point, most marches, I won't say most, a lot of marches are at 120. So what I would suggest for most people to do 
uh, turn off the accent, is to pick one note on your instrument, whatever it may be. You can even sing the note if you like, and just get used to almost counting yourself in. So if this is my, my half note, I'm thinking da, 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 this is my half note. You want to be able to go da, 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 and I know I can't sing it uh, too well there at the end, but you kind of get the point. And if 120, which is what my metronome was at, was right there, was a little too quick, obviously slow it down. If that makes sense. And once again, you'll be doing this uh, on your instrument. And this should help you to be able to be able to see these measures, right? Once again, only certain rhythms, there's only a set amount of things that you see more likely uh, one than the other as far as rhythmically is concerned. And I, I really stress rhythmic playing the, to a lot of the people that I teach or uh, that I go through with uh, sight reading lessons because obviously the, the time doesn't stop. You want to be able to have a click going and see it throughout the music. So I suggest this, you probably take the Omni book if you're a jazzer or take a uh, John Philip Sousa march and get you a pencil and you know mark an imaginary bar line through and just practice you know reading being able to get your eyes to keep going because it doesn't slow down with your ensemble you want to be able to keep going alright so how do we practice this right here all the rhythms get yourself some note cards on uh, I don't even know what size they are like three by five maybe Whatever the size of the little note cards are, split it in half so you, you know you can get the most bang for your buck. And on one note card, write the half note, the next one write two eighths, uh, dotted eighth, or excuse me, dotted quarter and eighth. Uh, geez, I know notes, I promise you. Etc. Write these rhythms down, line them up on a scale, set your metronome, and just practice. Right? You can do them in order, then shuffle them up, put them in a different order, and practice from there. But once again, like if it were me, and I can't believe my metronome just died, but I'll be my own metronome. So if I were counting myself in, uh, we want to be able to basically go whatever rhythm that you pick, you want to be able to you know perfectly get that down, uh, you know rhythmically. Uh, through those note cards. And so this is obviously, you're probably wondering, well, what about 6-8? I'll just write a couple up here, but the same thing happens uh, pretty much in 6-8. Now, it can get a little bit more complicated. Uh, so I'll write a couple up here, right? 6-8. Make sure I write this up here. And we can separate this so it doesn't, you know, look crazy. Yoink. 6-8. We can have our dotted quarter. You know, all eighths. Um, geez. What else can we have? We can have like this number right here. We can have something like that. You can have all the iterations of that. That's what I call it. 16th and then kind of did it out of order, but you get the gist of it. You know, and just write as many rhythms as you can. Obviously, there's probably a little bit more that are common, especially in a 6-8 march. You don't encounter jazz too much in 6-8, even though it kind of is triplets. But anyway, that's a whole other issue, right? Uh, but do the same thing with 6-8. Be able to, you know, put these on a uh, note card and be able to uh, play these in any order and at whatever tempo that is. And if you can't play it at that tempo, go ahead and slow it down to a tempo that you can and be able to recognize rhythm. It's all about rhythm recognition a lot of times, uh, but that's just one of many aspects in uh, sight reading. So, there you go. I hope that lesson kind of makes sense. Um, once again, this is just one you know, many different concepts and uh, ways that you can go about improving your sight reading. I uh, hope it helps. Uh, do it yourself or do it with the student that you have. And that's all I have for this sight reading. Maybe we'll do a, uh, another video on sight reading later. We'll call this one 101. The next one will be 102. Jeez, <laughs> maybe. Anyway, hope you got something out of it. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Check out my social media, blah, blah, blah. And until next time, I will see you. Happy practice.